All right, check this out. Here we have the Electronics Matrix RP17 with the Ryzen 7 4800H, RTX 2060, base 90 watt, boost at 110 watt, and 144 hertz full HD display. This video will demonstrate how I monitor Electro Boost and how it can affect performance as well as when it does absolutely nothing. Boosting on these Tongfang chassis has been an option across many vendors since the release of 9th generation Intel CPUs. It is a hardware mod designed to trick the system to pull more wattage and cannot be monitored with third-party software. Look up Shunt Mod for a similar trickery mod performed for the same results. Here we have the Battlefield 5 firing range with solid GPU saturation and our trusty watt meter. When boost is activated, taking this 2060 from 90 watts to 110 watts, the wattage moves up on the watt meter along with the frame rate and GPU frequency. Small gains, but small boost in wattage too. Same 5% gain shown within the TimeSpy graphics score. I can also apply a 180 MHz overclock to my RP17 since that's been relatively stable on this specific machine, and it will apply to both base and boost functions. However, boost doesn't work when the GPU is not fully saturated. You can press that little button all day and it'll do nothing to improve performance. This is the sign of a CPU bottleneck. Now the core and thread count are spectacular, but the Ryzen 4000 series mobile has trouble saturating this 2060 in many titles. Some have stated that the newer 5000 series Ryzen mobile will be better at gaming just on the L3 cache increase alone. I cannot wait to test. 